Coming up right now, 28 amusement park thrill seekers get an experience well beyond the price of admission. Also coming up, a trip for passengers on board a British Airways flight. It takes a bizarre turn why their destination was a trip to nowhere. A little bit later, the very special gift former President Trump gave YouTube star and to fighter Logan Paul. We'll let's show you more <laughs> about that. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English. We're welcoming you to Daily Flash and so glad to have you mm -hmm. here on uh, this Two for Tuesday. Oh, Maddie's hanging out there Matt as well. Matt, how you been, buddy? Good, man. You know, uh, the, the wife's got me on a vegan diet and I don't hate it, vegan. which I thought I would, I, would, I would not be in on, but I can't really tell the difference on some of the stuff she's been, she's been ordering. Like what? The burgers and stuff like that, okay. some of the chicken, like the sauces well, and not, everything. Well, she's getting chicken. a little more vegan. Chicken. So what is it? Yeah, it, 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 yeah. It, it's soy, I guess, based? I don't I don't know some type of vegan plant i don't ask i I'm just eat sorry. it <laughs> see I, you know and uh, you know god bless you for yeah. sure uh i i did a, the vegetarian thing for one year and i found it very very difficult but they also say for your blood type you yes. should check out uh before you do stuff like that oh, i'm not going all in I'm, I'm still getting my wings but you know okay yeah I, I you bring that up but a friend of mine was a vegetarian for years and she ended up reading that blood type yeah. diet book and she got her blood type tested and realized she should be eating meat and other things. She changed her diet completely, completely changed her. And you know, I know there's vegetarians out there, nothing against yeah, no, it. And, no. and you're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, a lot of time it's because you're, you need iron yeah. and you don't get that when you're in a vegetarian uh, diet. So you gotta take supplements and that sort of thing. And I know we'll get a barrage of emails yeah. just saying, vegan's a hard way to live. That's just what, sure. one avenue to consider. Yeah, yeah exactly. Say it's, that. It's, it, it's, not say a, it. it's not an end all be all, but <laughs> for some people it works. Um, Netflix is getting a couple NFL games this year on Christmas day. Okay. This now, is so crazy isn't this interesting? So they are selling, they're already selling ad spots for the Netflix Christmas Day football games. Five million for a 30-second wow. spot. Wow, they're, now, they're expecting that yes. high of a, mm -hmm. a, yes. a turnout. Yes, huge. Uh, and they're, you know, two big games. Uh, Chiefs, I believe, are, are one of them. I think the Steelers or Raiders are in another one. Anyway, but five million bucks for a 30-second ad. Now, for perspective, when it comes to the Super Bowl, you're looking at five to seven million dollars for a four or thirty second ad. That's for the Super Bowl. This is for Netflix. That is just incredible. I imagine. I wonder if they're going to be embedded. First off, the words "ad" and "Netflix" should I, never be in the same. I sentence. agree too. When I heard this, I'm like, I, I can't even comprehend ads on Netflix. So will those ads stay since it's like a recorded uh, set, set, uh, you know show more yes. or less? Because I imagine you can go back and watch it afterwards yeah. if those ads are staying there. If that's placed into they'll probably the slice them out with stuff for new Netflix shows or something like that in the future if it's something that they archive but oh you mean so if you watch it go back yeah, and watch, you watch it, again? it again they'll promote but, something oh, else maybe. well i don't know i mean that's what i'm saying why yeah. are they asking that kind of that, that kind of money and it seems like for christmas day especially i mean uh it, you know uh, i i don't really think about television too much at thanksgiving I guess. The, the last few years the nfl has done football games on christmas day it's unusual but they've, they've done it and actually the numbers have been better than basketball games wow, for the nfl so i think there's some sort of track record there that suggests look you could probably reel in this kind of money I, I for Netflix. I think it's because a lot of bars are closed on Christmas, so they know uh, people are going to have to watch them at home, and it's a more oh. focused audience. <laughs> yeah. Because the thing, the problem with sports TV right now is they all know that it's just up in the bar and no yeah. one's paying attention. With this, it's going to be focused people you're on right. Netflix. You're right. Kind of, you're dialed yeah. in your living room. Uh, but I have a problem with now the NFL is splintering off into – NBC Peacock, Amazon Prime, Netflix, uh, and then these games that they're playing overseas yeah. will only be able, you'll only be able to watch them if you have X, Y, and Z service. So I just kind of wonder at what point, uh, you know, it's so fractured, it's becoming so fractured. To be able to find it, and even if you get, I know at least for Sunday Major ticket? League, Sunday Ticket, yep. my, my uh, father-in-law has uh, the MLB, he's a big Braves fan, yep. and he's blacked out, and I go, well, just watch it on the MLB thing, because no, he won't let us watch it there nope. either, because it's blacked out. That's unfortunate to yeah. see that. But well, it's interesting to see, I know Prime had some great numbers with their yep. uh, Thursday Night Football And as YouTube well. now has the Sunday Ticket package, so you've <laughs> got to go crazy. to YouTube if you want to <laughs> 
want to buy that. You need a flow chart to yeah. keep track of all this stuff. And then, and then you're paying for it, but then you're yes. also paying, then you're going to have to see ads as well. Mm -hmm. We'd love to know your thoughts on that. Go to our website, dailyflashshow.com. You can click on sound off. Tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's head now uh, and about this. More than two dozen people experience a crazy ride after a coaster in, in Oregon left them hanging literally upside down. Ugh. 28 passengers no, on the you. atmosphere. It's at a Portland theme park. <laughs> the ride suddenly stops. They were stuck for nearly a half hour like that, <sighs> folks. The ride operators, they called 911, started their emergency procedures, and according to a Facebook post shared by the Portland Fire Department, the rescue teams were trained for this exact scenario. They trained for this. Park says the attraction is now closed until further notice. I would hope so. And uh, how do you leave somebody like that for that long? It seems like your blood would rush to your head for a while. 30 and minutes. That's a long time. Oh. Scary, too. Yeah. The whole nope. Time. nope. That's why I don't do the carny rides. Well, I was. Yeah, I that, do them at the theme parks. The point I, was I don't making. do carny rides. They set those things yes. up. Uh, and, Even though this was a theme park, a parking the, place, lot. the yeah. place is like still not up to Disney Universal standards. Yeah. So they test it 10 times before that the park is true. opens. Nope, I don't even do those at, at the outskirts ones. But don't you remember as a kid when the carnival came to town, you didn't think twice about it? Like that uh, no. zipper ride? I did, because my dad like, was a carny and well, told me how bad they were made. Okay, so. We did win all the, the games, exception. though. <laughs> That's, uh, by the way, Matt's book is called My Dad Was a Carney. Carney. <laughs> oh, no, I got a better title for that one if we're doing that. All right. All no, right. I don't, I don't we'll that. move on. <laughs> Passengers on board a flight flew for hours across the Atlantic Ocean only for the plane to turn around at the halfway point. The mishap occurred while the British Airways flight was traveling from London to Houston. The trip's total flying time should have been 10 hours and 20 minutes. The plane was halfway to its destination with 300 passengers when it experienced a technical issue as it approached the Canadian coastline. Flight crew said the jet had a problem with the engine. By the time it returned to London, it had flown nearly 5,000 miles across the Atlantic twice. Unclear why the aircraft had to fly all the way back to London for repairs. Just for that, you know, I mean, I'm certain it's because of protocol. There's probably sure. some kind of uh, reason that yeah. they go, all right, doesn't matter whatever is going on, we need you back here. It could be, a, it could be as simple as, well, the part we need is back. Yes. <laughs> we left it back. <laughs> we left it back there. <laughs> back in London. Who the knows battery we need for yes. the engine to run. The last yeah. place you want to be is over a body it's a of European water. European plug. And we it, it's a whole yeah. plug, yeah. yeah. It, it's an electric airplane <laughs> and they, they need the converter. Yes. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this will come out uh, eventually sure. what exactly happened but I would be happy that say hey look it seems like they, they could finish the flight out they had made yeah. it back but that wasn't the case they knew what's best and uh, I don't know anything about aviation yeah all I know is that it if was it a Boeing airplane that would be the first question I'd <gasps> ask yes I mean, we can't even get this thing fixed up in this International Space Station. Oh, Do you know. hear about all the problems? Yeah, that, that yeah that's not going to end well. Yeah, that's so that's all. I know we're going <laughs> off on a yeah, yeah. Tangent, tangent here. But, but uh, yeah. I guess the question is, like, it, it, would you feel safer to land over the ocean or or, or take your chances over land? It, I mean, I, I, the, that was the it, first thing that I thought of. If, if you know, but basic could have been, a, you know, uh, yeah, I think uh, it would be on the land would be, landed, to be yeah. better for me. But it seems like they're somewhere between there and there it had to be an island or a, 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 a country that has a, 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 <laughs> oh, an airstrip, an airstrip to be able to, <laughs> to land on. All right. Former President Trump met influencer Logan Paul recently. And during their meeting, well, Trump gave him a T-shirt <laughs> with his mugshot on it. Take a look. Uh, is, it, is this your mugshot? This is, yeah, can you mug <laughs> No way, you're a gangster. This is what we're reduced to. You know, no buddy. way, no way. <laughs> President Trump joked that, hey, it sells. Jake Paul uh, <laughs> laughed while posing with the T-shirt and his prime right behind yeah. him as well, too. Got to make sure you promote that. Prime. Uh, you know, here's something I, I got to tell you. Would you have thought, like, you know, in this, I know when influencers started coming out and more and more people coming out, like, yeah. just how, uh, in, well, how influential they are. Now this guy could be fighting Mike Tyson and meeting uh, Trump as well. So tell me how Jake Paul got his start. He was just on YouTube, Vine. right? He was, really a, he was one of those early Vine kids Vine, coming Vine out of kid. college. He was actually a collegiate, like, really good uh, wrestler, uh -huh. but he started doing all these vines and his brother uh, started doing them, Jake. But they weren't, they weren't sports related stuff, were they? Mm -hmm. They were just, it was just kind of goofy, commentary, dumb, goofy stunts and stuff. things, And then they right? just built the network, yeah. He's just smart enough to build the network. Plus, his parents are very wealthy and they uh, were able to, oh, he was okay. kind of not that, had a job and he started a compound uh, in LA where he uh, brought all the influencers uh, together. And that's how his kind of ramp up kept going. Doesn't that sound fun? A compound of influencers. Just, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like a nightmare. And yes. not having 
trying to have a real job, it uh, does pay off sometimes yeah. uh, when you know you the have luxury. A, when you have a nice safety net like mm -hmm. that. I, I was not aware. Of, yeah, I mean, he's he's done really money. well in the WWE. Right, I'll give him that he's way. got the prime drink. He lives in Puerto Rico now. Like he he's really built it up, and he just takes he, he takes. Uh, uh, shots at these. He's even said he's willing to go interview Biden if they'll have him interviewed. Like he's willing to just whatever his face well, can no, get on, he'll do. Of course, he's an influence. Yeah. He'll do whatever, I mean, go, whatever to get clicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. go swim in worms. All right, I'll do it. People will watch it, right? I mean, it's everything that we try to do. Will he go on Fear Factor? I, he, he would do it. Oh yeah, if it's I don't even think that sure. show is on anymore. No, 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 no. It would be a whole other level. Yeah. There. Hey, you know what? He's got a following. People yeah. watch him. That's what they do. And uh, we just talked about it. So uh, mission accomplished there. We have more flash trending news and entertainment coming up right around the corner. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Daily Flash. This is the moment you've all yeah. been waiting for. Time to get flash. Ooh. We dish out some hot topics that we will sound off on. We want you to join us uh, in the conversation with your thoughts on our social media. You guys ready? We are ready. We have okay. about uh, 15 seconds each, right? Yeah, to kind of say our part, and then we yep. kind of all talk after. Okay, right. first up, here's our first topic. A viewer asks if she should get flashed or not for changing the name of her daughter after a request from her sister-in-law. Okay. She says, my husband and I came up with a name for our daughter and told the family. Now, for months, no one said anything. Weeks after giving birth, my sister-in-law came to me and asked if we would change her name from Ember to something else. Turns out it was the name of her stillborn daughter. Uh, the viewer said no. She would not change oh, yeah. it. Was she wrong for not respecting her sister-in-law's Request Mitch, I'll start All right, first off, you listen, yeah, a name is a name. It goes with you for the rest of your life, yeah. all, 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 by all means. And a parent, that's one of the hardest decisions they have to make is what they're going to call you. By all means, no, she should not have had to change it at all, uh, even if, you know, uh, this is what they worked on. And the whole time she'll be thinking about that, as morbid as that sounds, and I'm sorry, as, as mean as it sounds, there's no way you can go around it. When that child is who that you've thought of to give that name, it has to be something... You'd be able to keep. May. That is a hard no for me. Like we've, uh, my wife and I've already kind of picked out kids' names. If we yeah. get there, our first two, a boy or a girl, and we're not changing it, no matter what anybody in the family says. Like my family's got some weird names, and none of us said anything, <laughs> so we went with it. Plus, I mean, come on, the last name's Doolittle. The, the kid's gonna be stuck with that They've anyway. Already given so that the first name's true. gonna be fine, and then they're stuck with that. Yeah. One. So no, you're not changing it. I'm sorry. Is Dewey Doolittle an option? Do that, like no, 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 not an option. At so all. your thoughts? I mean, I mean, if you think about it, uh, you know, is it is is it disrespecting the parents' well, decision? I, I I think if she hadn't said anything, if she hadn't sent out the card and said, hey, this is our plan, this is who, how we plan to name the child, then maybe at that point this person should have spoken up That's about it. That's a good it. point, yeah. Um, I can understand it, and then it's kind of a family thing, and it's like, why did you name your child this? It's sort of a stigma now, but... I don't know why no one said anything to begin in with. In the first place. Yeah. Maybe like a middle name, too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next up, a viewer asks if she should get flashed or not uh, for not allowing her fiancé's best friend to come to their wedding. Now, there's a twist to this story, okay? okay? So hold on to your seats. She says, I'm not inviting my fiancé's best friend to our wedding because she pretends that I don't exist. To make matters worse, he's done nothing to address the situation. My fiancé said he did not want to end his friendship with her or do anything to jeopardize it because he wonders what would happen if we broke up. Okay. This made me wonder if he would protect me as his wife since he wasn't making me a priority as his girlfriend slash fiance. So who's in the right here? All right. Uh, can I go first? Yeah. All right, first, okay. So my understanding, so his best friend is a girl. Yeah. All right. Well, then 100%. I mean, it sounds like they, they just had a study out a while back that most women have a backup plan. Yeah. They have somebody in their mind yeah. if, they, if they get divorced. Sounds like that. that's what this person is. If, you know, unfortunately you have to walk away. And if they're as close as they are, that person would understand Hey, look, uh, you know this part. My new wife doesn't want you at the wedding. Yeah. So if you're a good enough friend as you are, which obviously it's going to be stressed out in the first place, then don't oblige to it at yeah. all. Wow. Matt, uh, I think you got to compromise. There were a few people on both sides of our lists when we did them. Where I'm like, does that one really have to come from her side? And, yeah. And on my side, she's like, does that one have to come? I don't know. Mitch might have get a little sideways because <laughs> does he need to come? Does this one? <laughs> but I mean, we we kind of both looked it out. It was like no ex boyfriends or girlfriends, even if we are friends. Yeah. With them still, because I'm friends with a couple of my ex girlfriends, sure. and so it was kind of that. Like, okay, let's let's. 
adhere to that type of thing. So I think you come to a common agreement. Yeah, really. and I think too, like, you know, if you're marrying this person, she has to be your priority. Yeah, Not your yeah. best friend. Like, I get it. You've got to, then if, if she's really your best friend, then maybe you're marrying the wrong person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying because you're supposed to be marrying your best friend yeah, in the first exactly. place. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I just keep thinking of my best friend's wedding with Julia Roberts. <laughs> uh, last one here. A viewer asks if uh, he should get flashed for purposely leaving his brother in the cold at family events. My brother is upset about being left out of family events and the siblings group chat. He also is being ignored at work and some of his colleagues don't invite him out to events outside of work hours. I told him that he is essentially excluding himself and that his behavior is the reason why he's left off the invite list. Should he get flashed or bring his brother back into the fold? Mitch? Uh, all right. Well, um, I know I, I have uh, two brothers, two sisters, and uh, if, you know, we, we don't do this the, you know, group chat thing, or yeah. whatever. But if we did, it, it seems like, yeah, you should do whatever you can. Even if you know the answer is going to be no, you should still extend that, that, that out because it could be a one time, you know, he might be going through something is he has the invitation there that it's always there. If you forget one time, and you're going to forget every time. And then eventually, well, they say you didn't even want me there in the first place. Yes. So yes. I, I think he should continue to invite him to come in. And matter of fact, that brother should be in. Even if you don't comment, at least you know what's going on in, in your family and not leaving out in the cold. Mm -hmm. and not going in, uh, just at least saying, well, I can't make it because of at least work a decent uh, excuse into What mix. if he's the kind of guy that doesn't comment with a couple of lines, but with paragraphs in text? Okay, well, then that's a different story. <laughs> no, uh, let, you got to let him say it. Okay, I mean, you all know, right. if you put him on that list, you know that, that that's probably what you're going to get out of the deal. So, okay. yeah, I can imagine that. Matt, group chat, problem. no group chat. Well, I don't have any brothers or sisters, but I think you've got to be uh, careful with maybe he's got a background that they don't like inviting to stuff. Maybe he's too much of a drinker or something ah. at some of these events. And they're like, hey, maybe we keep uh, Tommy out of the this one soiree we're having because he gets a little screwy but he's going to see it on Facebook or Instagram yeah. so I, th I think that it, it's a family dynamic you got to be yeah. careful with there because there, there's some people that we, we don't invite to some of our group stuff just because we're like eh, that one gets a little eh, sideways but if we're having right. a whole on party then we will invite them uh, but but it does say something about his personality if he's also sort of being excluded at work events and with coworkers. Yeah, so comes there's, off there's weird something though, going on there. But yeah. does does excluding him make matters worse? I, I think it, it, it would, but yeah. it, it, it it will reassure whatever he's going through yes. is is real. And you know, and, and if you're family, you're able to tell people generally how yeah. you feel about them. And maybe that's what. Hey, look, we want to invite you, but every time it seems like there's some kind of issue. What's going on? Every time you show up, you, and show, you strip down. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <laughs> why I don't get invited too much. <laughs> if you want to sound off on these stories, all you have to do is head to our socials and tell us what you think. Head to our website. There's a sound off button right there, dailyflashshow.com. We got more. We're doing car smarts right around the corner. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. In today's Car Smarts, Lauren Fix, the car coach, lets us know how your private information from your car can actually be handed right over to law enforcement. Automakers are giving up your data to the police. What happened to privacy? At least eight car makers in the United States have admitted they would backtrack on a voluntary privacy agreement and turn over your personal customer data to the government and to the police, prompting calls for an investigation. Automotive News reports 19 car makers had voluntarily signed up for the consumer privacy protection principles in 2014. Standards which would require the U.S. government and agencies, including the police, to obtain a warrant or court order to access customer location data. However, eight automakers misled customers about giving driver data to the police. And now U.S. automakers are raising questions about whether automakers can be held to account for departing from the promises made about user privacy. So who is giving your information to others? Toyota? Nissan, Subaru, Volkswagen, BMW, Mazda, Mercedes-Benz, and Kia would turn over your data if a subpoena were produced, in violation of the standards they signed up for. These car companies are following the agreement they signed. General Motors, Honda, Ford, Stellantis, and Tesla require a warrant for location data unless it was an emergency or customer consent was provided. Tesla was also the only brand to notify its customers of legal demands. Actually, all manufacturers should inform you if they're giving up your information and your data. This has not only raised concerns about what other privacy promises car makers have made that they won't be keeping, but it has also led to two U.S. senators calling for companies to be investigated by the Federal Trade Commission. 
And quote, automakers have not only kept consumers in the dark regarding their actual practices, but multiple companies misled consumers over a decade by failing to honor the industry's own voluntary privacy principles, said Senator Ron Wyden and Senators Ed Markey in a letter to the FTC. Mercedes-Benz, Toyota, and Kia all defended their practices, while the Alliance of Automobile Innovation, a lobbying group for the car industry, claimed the government agencies only request location information when there is clear danger to an individual. And quote, vehicle location information is also provided to law enforcement under specific and limited circumstances, such as when an automaker is providing a warrant or court order, or in situations where there is imminent threat or serious bodily harm or death to an individual, an AAI spokesperson told Automotive News. In March, the New York Times published an in-depth investigation about a Chevrolet Bolt owner who had been quoted a significantly higher insurance renewal premium, later discovering that his data was being sold to insurance firms by a data broker called LexisNexis. This was followed by a second report detailing a proposed class action lawsuit put forward by a Cadillac XT6 owner who claimed he was denied insurance by seven companies on an account of his LexisNexis driving report provided to the firms without his knowledge. Both of the vehicles were equipped with OnStar and GM's connected services brand, which is gathering information used by LexisNexis. In the wake of the reports, General Motors subsequently ended its partnership with both LexisNexis and Verisk a similar company, which also sold driving data to insurance companies. According to the New York Times, an internal document circulating within General Motors showed more than 8 million vehicles were actively supplying data through OnStar's smart driver program as of 2022. The problem is you sign away your ownership when you use their systems and keep an eye out for those opt-out options and support the government bills that protect your privacy. Hey, we are deep into grilling season and everyone is looking to up their grilling game. Here to share their favorite tips and tricks for mastering the art of outdoor cooking are New York Times bestselling cookbook author and chef Gabby Dalkin and Tillamook dairy expert Stephen Hallstone. Welcome Gabby and Stephen. Hi, Hello. so excited to be here. Thanks for having us. So Gabby, you just released a new book all about grilling. Can you give us some of your top tips? Yes, I sure did. This is two months old and when you boil down grilling to its simplest form. It is heat plus time plus food, and we're using really incredible ingredients. And I don't like to overcomplicate anything. You just need some great tools, and you can think about using your grill just like you would your oven. Once you like really dial in that formula, you can cook pretty much everything in here, and we're about to tell you all these incredible recipes. So. Yeah, one Start of my favorite from your book is your spicy Diavolo Soprasada pizza. It uses crushed green olives, spicy Soprasada, and it's topped with full flavored, creamy, melty Tillamook whole milk mozzarella shreds. It's one of my favorite recipes in there. It's a really incredible recipe and you can do pizza on your grill, no problem. Another quintessential recipe we must have is a smash butter burger. We are quite literally grating Tillamook extra creamy butter into the meat mixture, forming it into a patty and throwing it on the grill or the griddle. Plus we're topping it with Tillamook's famous extra sharp farm style cheddar slices. So just those two things alone are absolute perfection. Top it with whatever you want. And then another thing which is sometimes shocking to people is you can actually bake on your grill. If you shut the top of your grill or a smoker, it acts just like the oven. So this is my snickerdoodle pizookie with vanilla bean Tillamook ice cream on top. It is the creamiest way to end a meal. And you can find all of these recipes and where to find our products at Tillamook.com or on social media you can follow us. And Gabi's latest cookbook is available anywhere where books are sold. Hey guys, thanks for that. And we'll make sure we have this on our website at dailyflashshow.com. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. Mitch English here. Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. I don't know if you heard about this story. This tow, tow truck operator in Texas. That's hard to say. Tow truck operator in Texas. In Texas. Okay. Uh, they were called out. Uh, somebody was doing their morning walk, and they walked by a church, and they saw this uh, 2,000 Porsche Boxster sitting in this parking lot. 
of uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses uh, parking lot and okay. everything. And they walked by and they, and they happened to look at it and it had this blanket. And on the top of the blanket, you could see like hair coming out of it. And they were looking at it and they look and you could see some feet <gasps> at, at the bottom of it. They didn't know what to do. They called the police. Police came and they go, well, it's on private property. I'm not sure what we can do, but it looks like so they had to get a warrant all together. Oh my God. So all this stuff started happening and th they went in, got the warrant, were able to open up the uh, Porsche Boxer. Uh, that had been sitting there apparently for several days. Ooh. So they open a the door thinking the absolute worst. They grab the blanket with the hair and everything, pull it out. It was one of those real doll sex dolls. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the only thing, I, the first thing I thought was like, this thing, this thing was out there for seven, <gasps> uh, several days. And why did anybody inside the church see it? And, and I'm not making fun of Jehovah's Witnesses, no, but no. they don't have windows on their oh. church, so nobody saw. Them. Oh my they goodness! Up there and left this this gorgeous Porsche with uh, well with a gorgeous sex doll inside. Wow! Uh, they towed it all off, but uh, they, they were thank goodness it was uh, nobody. No, no, no. no. What happened? That that's the that's yes. the question. What, the what, story what behind it. That's a Netflix docu series. I want to know. How do you leave? First of all, a Porsche. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, it's a two thousand. Sure, it's you know twenty five years old, but still, it's and a then, classic now. And knowing, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and knowing you have a sex doll in there, did you just forget? We're gonna leave the thing at you know. We're gonna leave my Porsche wow. and the sex doll. Darn. And, and you, she she had to have a cool name like Porsche. Porsche, Porsche. Or something like Porsche, that, like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> or it was a scorned wife that got upset at the husband and she just drove the, the car to the parking lot. I like that lot idea. And with the sex doll wrapped up in the blanket to say, I told, I found you out. See, this is why we have Jackson on the show here. <laughs> you, you have a, a mind. I, that, that is so far away from I what I would have thought. I can see that could be an ex girlfriend or an ex wife. And kind of how mood. can I embarrass yeah. this person yes. the, the most? And then, oh, first off, wrap it up so yeah. people would be suspicious. And then, second, put Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses' parking lot. I love it. Okay. That's the story. Wait, what if they knocked <laughs> up? to the That's window. Hi, we'd like to talk to you about, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Here's, like a a bunch of Here's a pamphlet. <laughs> right. uh, more than two dozen people experienced quite a ride after a coaster in Oregon left them hanging upside down. 28 passengers were on the atmosphere oh, it's a play on words. at a Portland theme park when the ride suddenly stopped. They were stuck for nearly a half hour. The wow. ride operators called 911 and started their emergency procedures. According to a Facebook post shared by the Portland Fire Department, their rescue teams trained for this exact kind of scenario in Involving this particular ride, the park says the attraction is closed until further notice. Wow, you know uh, that's scary. You can imagine that first off, but this is a place that it's a permanent fixture. Yeah. And something happened. And why is it always when it's always at the very top? Yeah. You know, it's not like you it know. can't be like <laughs> close to the ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But and then what, what's the conversation you have while you're up there? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You dating anybody? Yeah. How's it How are going? Things? What if we don't get off this thing? Is this what it's like in Australia? I hope they made everybody take the stuff out of their pockets because if they're just yes. sitting there or somebody gets their phone out it just goes oh. flying down oh, oh you yeah. know that's, that's a good point oh, and i'm certain somebody had to have gone live uh, oh yeah you know so oh, I well i know it for sure At universal because their stuff goes upside down you can't have anything in your pockets at all anymore but you know people find a way to they've got metal it. detectors oh, yeah. though yeah. Yeah. yeah that's universal this is portland this is true Oregon. Portland things a little bit different Port yeah which is it portland by the way is a town that that capitalized on being weird too. Yes, so they, they it like. is Portland, Oregon, right? Yes. I think it is. Yeah. 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 yeah, they could pay money to get people to do that. Then, <laughs> what ride would I got stuck on? And it, it, this is no lie with my boys on It's a Small World. Yep, did it. And, and Been there. They have not. They, we talk about the shutdowns at Disney. This ride, you hear about it breaking down all the time, or it stops. Yeah. And eventually, people were getting up and walking off, and my, they couldn't my, take my it sons anymore. were like, you know, here, well, I'm like, you know, they let us in and everything. I'm like, I'm not going to get kicked out of this place. Yeah. They go, come on back, can't we leave? I want to go. They're leaving. Can't we just leave? I'm like, no. Yeah. They'll get it going. And it was a good half hour, 45 minutes sitting out of here. And you know, they never turned that music off. Never. Nope. Never at never. all. And, and no lights on. As that well. would be enough to drive me out of there in a hot second. And, and yeah. go, go crazy, right? Yes. Go crazy. <laughs> I'd rather hang upside down. Tell you what, we will do our best not to drive you yeah. crazy. And uh, no, it's a small world at all. A new AI-powered hearing aid makes history and finally cracks code on background noises. Tech Life journalist Jennifer Jolly joins us with a first look at this life-changing innovation. Thank you so much for having me. What a lot of people don't realize about hearing loss is just how much it impacts the masses. You know, one in every eight of us, including some 1.1 billion young people now suffer from some form of hearing damage. 
This is an issue that's also really near and dear to me because a few years ago, a company called Phonak hooked my dad up with hearing aids and I watched that whole experience bring him back from a an increasingly isolated world. That happened a few years ago, and at the time, those were the most technologically advanced hearing aids on the market. Today, well, the company asked me to help them introduce Phonex Next Generation Adeo Sphere Infineo hearing aids. You're among the first people in the whole world to see these. They're debu debuting at a launch event at Sphere in Las Vegas. This is a world first hearing aid that harnesses the power of artificial intelligence, AI, all that AI everybody's been talking about. Well, this is getting used to separate speech from background noise by using some 22 million sound samples to differentiate between a person's voice and all other sounds, really. It's a dramatic leap forward in signal processing, which gives you unprecedented speech understanding from all directions in virtually any environment. And Phonak, well, it's already showcasing this new tech on the exterior of Sphere at a scale that's never been seen before, which tells me it's a really big deal. Here's what's so cool about it. Think about eating dinner at a crowded restaurant. Your brain has to differentiate between the sound of dishes clattering, other people talking, background music, a thousand different sounds. Your mind and ears have to sort through it all in real time to tune out distraction and tune in on, say, a server asking you a question or a loved one sitting across from you. It's incredibly complicated and simply turning down the volume on some of it, well, that just doesn't work. So to really tackle this issue, Phonak uses AI and a microscopic, incredibly advanced, dedicated deep neural network chip that's like having a computer nestled inside a device smaller than a fingernail. That instantly adds 53 times more processing power than existing hearing aids, and that same chip also enables 4.5 million neural connections to effectively separate speech from noise regardless of the direction. It is absolutely stunning. Um, I have one on right now. I've tried these myself. I put this on, it's like having superhero hearing. We are in Las Vegas, just walking through a casino with all the machines and alarms and bells and whistles. I can actually make out everything people are saying really clearly, and it all syncs up with an app on my phone so I can customize even more as I go for every environment in need. I can hear people talking behind me back there if I want to, or I can just tune in and have an intimate conversation with you. Uh, you can find out more about all of this technology from your audiologist or your doctor and go to phonac.com slash sphere for more information. With today's rapidly unpredictable weather, it's important to know how to read the air quality index and protect yourself when air quality is poor. Dr. Nikki Vars McCulloch, respiratory health specialist at 3M's personal safety division has more. Extreme heat, wildfires, and intense weather have become more common. Dr. Nikki Vars McCullough, respiratory health specialist at 3M's personal safety division, has more. Wildfires, drought, and other conditions can result in poor air quality, such as high levels of particles in the air. The first step in helping to protect yourself from exposure to poor air is to understand the air quality index monitored by the Environmental Protection Agency. When air quality is poor, you should take measures to reduce particles in your home or that you breathe. If you are in immediate danger, follow the authorities' instructions. Otherwise, it's often best to stay indoors. Close all doors and windows, and if you have an HVAC system, use a high-efficiency filter, such as a Filtrate MERV-13 air filter. If you must go outside, a 3M N95 respirator is one option to help reduce exposure to airborne particulate pollution. For more, visit cdc.gov or 3m.com slash wildfire safety. Hey, did you know protein can do more than just build muscles? Well, joining us today to talk about how to effectively integrate protein into our daily diets and the importance of meal prepping and share tips of achieving long-term health goals is head of nutrition at MyFitnessPal, Melissa Yeager. Thanks for joining us, Melissa. Protein is a macronutrient that is popular to talk about these days and essential for each and every one of us to incorporate throughout our diet to support our overall health and well-being. Because not only does it support our muscle mass, but it also helps to keep us full longer and stabilize those blood sugar levels to in turn reduce cravings and help us navigate incorporating more nutrient-dense foods throughout the day. And this is where the Quick Start High Protein Plan from MyFitnessPal can help us not only identify protein sources within our diet, but provide us with easy tools such as our downloadable grocery shopping lists and 
easy to incorporate recipes to help set you up for success with your high protein diet. Now to get started with this, you can head to the Apple App Store or Google Play Store to download MyFitnessPal for free today and get started with the Quick Start High Protein Plan. And now lifestyle expert Carmen Ordonez shares tips on outfits and dorm decor to ensure a memorable and fashionable school year with Shine's affordable and trendy essentials for students perfect for the warm to fall transition. One of the best places to find trendy back to school pieces is Shein. I mean, they're just known for consistently delivering a wide variety of affordable and stylish options for everyone. It's no wonder it's one of the most downloaded fashion apps. One of my top picks is the Shein Teen Girl Letter Patch Detail Overall Jumpsuit. It's comfy, it's versatile. You can easily transition it from the summer to the fall. Or how about this beautiful floral dress paired with a t-shirt underneath. They also have kid sizes for all ages, so you're bound to find that perfect back to school outfit. Now, when it comes to college dorm room decor, you can also do it on a budget. Shein has an amazing selection of dorm decor essentials to help transform any space from this beautiful throw blanket to this mini handmade knotted ball decor. You'll be able to find the perfect piece to really make your dorm room your own. For more information and to check out the entire back to school selection, you can search for BTS 2024 on the Shein app as well as Shein.com. As much as 80% of a child's learning is visual, with children spending most of the school day reading, looking at a board, or using a laptop, much like I did. Yet one in four school-aged children struggle with reading and learning because of undiagnosed vision problems. VSP Network doctor Jennifer Wademan has more. How a child processes their visual information is, is quite a complicated process. And so if a child isn't seeing clearly in the classroom or their eyes are not working well together, we can definitely see some uh, impacts of that on their academic performance, overall confidence, and overall well-being. We're definitely seeing a lot more uh, device use in the classroom and outside of the classroom. When a kid is on a, a device, they tend not to blink as much. And so dry eyes can actually be an issue. Headaches, uh, eye fatigue, those are all some symptoms that can come with uh, device use. Definitely recommend unplugged activities, you know, uh, taking a break, looking far away, getting your kid outdoors. Those are all very good options just to kind of step away from that device or that screen. A great source is vsp.com slash eye doctor. From there, you can find an eye doctor in your community or local area. Well, many Americans are bracing for the financial pinch that comes with going back to school. Joining us today is Courtney Alev, financial expert and consumer advocate from Intuit Credit Karma, to share tips to help parents and students navigate the financial costs of going back to school. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Courtney, as we head back into the back to school season, how can parents save money while purchasing all the new gears and everything else they need for the school year? So we know that the back to school shopping season can be really expensive. And a recent Intuit Credit Karma survey showed that 44% of parents are dreading back to school shopping this year because of those higher costs. And over half are expecting to spend more this year than they have in prior years. So if this is you, what can you do? The first thing you wanna do is assess what you already have and prioritize accordingly. Your student will likely have a supply list. And from there, you can check out what you've already got. From there, then you wanna track your spending and make a budget. Really try to the best of your ability to see exactly how much you can spend on back to school shopping this year. And you wanna be really careful to focus on what your child truly needs instead of what they just want. I know when I was a kid, I always wanted a new lunchbox or backpack every year, even if maybe I didn't need one. And then once it's time to go shopping, you wanna be really crafty with how you're sourcing those supplies. You can check out deals, shop around, and you could consider buying refurbished electronics like laptops or tablets if your child needs one to save money. And be sure to check with your school to see if there's other resources available to you. For example, there's some community programs out there that actually provide free electronics to those who qualify. What tips can you offer for college students and their parents who are struggling to balance the cost of school supplies and dorm room essentials? Yeah, heading off to college is very expensive, a lot of new expenses to consider, so you wanna be sure to shop smart. 
for that dorm room, you know, you can shop secondhand. First, see what you might already have at home that you want to bring with you, maybe extra bedding or kitchen appliances. And then you can check out online marketplaces or thrift stores for some gently worn furniture or that mini fridge you just can't live without. And textbooks can be a major expense for a lot of college students. So be sure to check with your campus to see if they offer a used book program. You may be surprised at just how much you can save. And then for all those supplies, be sure to check out back to school sales in your area. And if you're shopping in store, there's some retailers like Best Buy or Target that might actually match competitor prices at the register. So you wanna do a little bit of research before. And lastly, don't forget about seeing if those retailers have student discounts. There's some major tech brands like Apple that can offer student discounts up to 15 to 20%. So those savings can really add up if you're shopping for college. Courtney, where can we go for more info? You can check out creditkarma.com or download the Credit Karma app. We have a ton of tools and resources that can help. Thanks, Courtney. And we'll make sure we have this on our website at dailyflashshow.com. Hey, Mitchie. Hey, Jackson. Yeah, I want to talk about that big story uh, coming out of Hollywood. Whoa, 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 hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I want to get Matt in on this call. All right, hold on. Hey, what's up, Mitch and Dias? Matt in! Mitchie. Matthias. Mitch, my man. So, Matty of Birkenshire. What's going on? Hey, AJ wants us to talk about a big story that's happening. Uh, this kid, the Kiki, says hi. He has his own Instagram. That's great, Matt, but um, I really want to talk about this big story coming out of Hollywood. Ooh, dog and cat, it's hey, all. You should check it out. Uh, like, this kid, the Kiki. Oh, I want to know what's going on. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, so, uh, real quick. I'm uh, why does he still have a dial-up modem? Hey, I gotta get back to wrestling stuff. It's on the media. Uh, you know what? Maybe we should just try this later. Okay, all right. Take your picture. <laughs> Peace and love. Daily Flash. Where, where are you? It's just better when you're part of the conversation. Join us online. Welcome back to Daily Flash. A woman and a robot attempt to solve a mystery. This is today's must-watch series, Sunny. So, why Japan? Food, culture, it sounded perfect. My family was in a plane crash. Things have been, uh, weird. Can I help you? I have a gift. Hajimemashite, Suzy-san. I'm Sunny. Bring it in. OK. Robots can be of great comfort. I don't want a robot. I hate robots. Sunny was created by your husband. I'm confused. Masa works in refrigerators. You are also laugh riot. <laughs> what are you hiding from me? How much does Masa talk to you about what he does at Emotech? Maybe I could help figure this out. Did you really know my husband? I don't know. My first memory is meeting you. I heard about this, like, guide that helps you break into home bots. Suzy-san, they want something from you. Sunny, right? Does it seem normal? Sunny, are you okay? Don't you see, Suzy? I was programmed for you. I'm gonna find out what happened to my family. I know about trying to fight pain and mess. But do we have to do it alone? Ooh, that looks good. It did, it, ho it hooked me okay. in. Uh, and yeah. then of course Rashida Jones there play that. Uh, so it looks like a little bit of humor in it, but it looks mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, well, that does it for us today. It sure does. Thanks, y'all, for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Head to our website, dailyflushshow.com. Bye-bye.